Hi, I'm Dave Chung, Chief Medical Executive at Children's Health and UT Southwestern Medical Center. Welcome to the In the Know video series. Hi, today we have with us Dr. Abba Chowdhury, who's an associate professor in the Department of Pediatric at UT Southwestern Medical Center and pediatric endocrinologist at Children's Health. Welcome. Thank you. Thanks for having me here. Yeah, I was looking very much forward to our conversation today. Thank you. Uh, tell us uh, what all great work that you do. Absolutely. So I'm the director of the diabetes program here, and we see 2,500 patients with diabetes, and we diagnose around 300 new patients with diabetes every year. Just as a background, type 1 diabetes is an autoimmune condition. There is a gradual loss of the pancreatic beta cells and uh, they stop make, the patients stop making insulin. So at this time, there is no cure for diabetes. Our only treatment option is insulin. And traditionally, uh, we ask our patients to prick their fingers and check blood glucose is about four to six times a day and take about four to six shots a day. That is, that is a lot. So we have technology now. Continuous glucose monitors, these are devices which the patient wears on their body and this checks blood glucoses. Some sensors check every minute and they're good for about 10 to 14 days. We also have insulin pumps now. More recently, we have these devices called automated insulin delivery devices where these glucose sensors talk to the insulin pumps and they have an AI algorithm, oh which is really cool. Our patients are able to stay in range with their blood sugars throughout the day because these pumps and sensors talk to each other and they make automatic adjustments in the doses of insulin. So with all these monitoring that, as you mentioned, old days of finger pricking, mm -hmm. and that's no longer required with these devices? When a patient is on a continuous glucose monitor, they do not need to check uh, finger stick blood glucose unless they are very low or very high. I see. These are very accurate devices and technology has gotten better over the years. There are some other exciting innovation, right? There are plenty of exciting innovations. So I do want to talk about uh, T-Zield. So T-Zield is the first disease modifying agent uh, in the field of diabetes. So this was approved in November of 2022. This is an anti-CD3 monoclonal antibody. CD3 is, an, is a molecule on the surface of the T effector cells. Mm. So this medication will delay the development of stage 3 diabetes by an average of two years. That's great. So what is, that, what is the implication of our positive output? If you know that your child is going to develop diabetes, you're going to be watchful and there are going to be lower incidence of diabetic ketoacidosis, which is what about 50 to 60 percent of our patients come in with. And they are very sick when they are diagnosed with uh, DKA and when they come into the hospital. So it sort of offers a soft fall into the diagnosis and, and a smooth progression. Is there some other innovation down the road or... So this medication, t -Zield, we were actually a part of a clinical trial called the PROTECT study, mm -hmm. and they used this medication in stage three diabetes. So that is I a see. stage of diabetes once you already have signs and symptoms of diabetes to prolong the honeymoon phase. Huh. So the results are not out yet, but I, I think this, will, this drug will be approved for an indication of stage three diabetes in the future. Do you see ever uh, this drug is being used for to completely mitigate the diabetes? That is the idea, but we don't have any results as of yet. We are in the process of enrolling in a T-Zield registry, which is going to include all the sites in the, in the United States, so we can get ideas about side effects and patient-related outcomes. So intent is for all the participating centers to be able to really share knowledge and information. Absolutely, and that's, that's going to be huge because we are still very early on in this treatment. We were part of the PROTECT study, so we have used this medication in our center before as a part of the research study, but this is, this is purely clinical. But as far as the administration of insulin, is it still in the traditional way of these children and young adults are getting shots? Yes, so they are getting shots, yeah. and, and we try to 
transition, most of our patients on insulin pumps where, you know, the device is changed every three days. So they're getting all their insulin through the insulin pump. That's, uh, that's got to be a huge advance in medicine. It is a huge advance, and we are noticing that our patients who are on technology have much better A1Cs and better quality of life. So we feel with this technology, we are able to move the needle on hemoglobin A1C and patient outcomes. We are very close to you know, a fully functioning pancreas. We are not there yet because we still need user input. The patient wearing the pump still has to enter how many carbs they're eating. There's a very unique pump, and we were actually one of the centers which trialed that pump as a part of the clinical trial. So this is the bionic pancreas. Yeah. Uh, the eyelet pump, it's a unique pump in the sense there are no settings. We do not set any basal rates or uh, carb ratio or insulin sensitivity on the pump. All this pump needs is the weight of the patient. Really? And the pump has enough artificial intelligence to figure out how much insulin you need. Wow. As a part of the clinical trial, we enrolled 16 participants, and now we are using this. It's now FDA approved. We are using it up for our patients in our clinic. What other exciting projects or news or uh, information that's um, upcoming or coming around the corner? One of my projects is monitoring uh, you know, our patients who are struggling with diabetes remotely in real time using a continuous glucose monitor. So I'm actually currently monitoring a patient and I can see their glucose data on my phone and really? all the time. Um, I know it's a labor intensive process, but I have been watching her numbers uh, and if she is going high, her numbers are high, I've been sending her message in real time using a HIPAA compliant texting platform to remind her, hey, you're running high, check, you know, check your, check, uh, take some insulin. That's great. I've been monitoring her for three weeks now uh, and her numbers have, are looking much, much better. So just sort of an extrapolation of this, this is labor intensive and it's not feasible for everybody, right? We are actually in the process of setting up a remote patient monitoring Great. platform. And the idea is that this is a patient, sort of a, you know, a population dashboard where we can see all our patients, see their glucose data, which is imported from their continuous glucose monitoring device. And our educators will help us just sort of sort through the list and see which of these patients need more attention? Yeah. Who should they reach out to that day? Yeah. Who needs more handholding or an adjustment in insulin doses? That's fascinating. And what about the partnership between UT Southwestern Medical Center and Children's Health? I think we have the best of both worlds. Uh, we have our children's colleagues and we have the cutting edge uh, treatment offered by UT Southwestern. It's a good collaboration opportunity. We have an incredible team. We have nurse practitioners, diabetes educators, nurses, MAs, ASRs, and everybody works as a team together. And we have an incredible group of endocrinologists and educators who are, you know, ready for research and ready to improve patient outcomes. Well, it's been great having you here this afternoon. Thank, Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me.